I missed you all so much last I week. Thank you. We Thank missed you, you so, so much. <laughs> it's good to be back. It's like, it feels like home to me. Uh, welcome everybody. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Dion Woods, owner and artist at the Turquoise Iris, and I am also a bloom expert, um, and I'm one of your co-hosts today. I, as we approach November, we have some really exciting projects ahead for you all, right, Kara? We do. We have been planning, you know, our Thanksgiving episodes and mm -hmm. what we can do for you guys and how you guys can kind of level up your Thanksgiving celebrations. Those will be coming in the next couple of weeks. And then for Christmas, like, I think we have some really fun floral ideas that uh, I really haven't seen talked about on a talk show. So I'm really excited about that. Um, by the way, I'm Kara Jameson. I'm one of the co-hosts of the Flowers and Friends talk show. I'm a cut flower grower an educator. I love all things flowers. And today's episode is it's right up my alley because yeah. we're yeah, talking about dry flowers and, and wreath making. But uh, Anna, I'm going to take it to you. Now, these next two months are definitely my favorite months of the year. I mean, there's there's so much flowers involved in everything. We we have Thanksgiving, we have Christmas. There's so many reasons to have flowers in your life. So I'm really as excited as you are about the last episodes of this year that we've been planning. By the way, I'm Ana Galena. I'm a floral designer. I'm one of the co-hosts of this wonderful show. And I love spending every Friday here with you ladies. <laughs> Anna, I had a friend um, at my last retreat mention that she watched your pilot on Bloom TV Network, and she just went on and on and about how much <laughs> she loved it, and she she just she learned so much. And I think that's um, the title of today's show with um, dried floral wreath making. There's so much more involved in what you guys are going to hear today. So yes, sit 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 tight, grab some coffee, grab some tea, whatever you need, because you're really going to learn a lot from our girl Katie today. Mm -hmm. um, but before we get started, let's run that intro video that leaves me dancing all the time. Happiness. Ladies, yes, happiness and joy. Um, ladies, we want to ask that you tag your friends in the comments. This is all about our community, building our connection, and all of us learning more about flowers and the impact they can have on our lives. So tag your friends, your fellow flower lovers. Um, I want to know what I missed last week because I, I did not get a chance to watch. So tell me what I missed. Aquaponics. It was so <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it was so interesting. So Sarah and Tom of the Grateful Gardeners, um, they are an organic cut flower farm near the Washington, D.C. area. And um, they are just so interesting because they grow a lot of flowers aquaponically. And uh, what, does that, what does that mean? Okay, what does that mean? That means that they, they grow flowers in water, through a water, a, a soilless system, basically, is how it is, um, in their greenhouse. Uh, they got a special grant worth, they got a really good special grant to get a, a special aquaponic system to uh, basically do some research on how to grow cut flowers aquaponically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we encourage them, I would love for them to make a Bloom TV series of what does that even mean? How do you do that? Like, it's just such a different way of growing plants that uh, it was so interesting talking to him about it. So is the purpose to be more sustainable or yeah. to, um, is that what it's about? It is. Yeah. The, I know that there's uh, less weeds involved. You can oh, grow yeah. year round uh, kind of thing, um, <laughs> which would be beneficial for some flower farmers because it's, mm -hmm. it's grown in a controlled environment. You know, there are some things with that, though. you got to keep the greenhouse heated all winter. So, uh, yeah, they are just really doing a lot of research on it, and I'm Ooh. excited to see what they find. Let's show them. A, let's show a, 
a quick clip. Yes. Oh yeah, the clip from last week. Look yeah. I don't think I could be anything other than an environmentalist. I just have to care that much about it, right? So, but we both do. And and so one of the things from the very beginning we've been focused on is how do we grow more sustainably, more regeneratively, um, organically, whatever it is we can do. Um, and I started looking into growing techniques and ultimately stumbled upon hydroponics and then aquaponics and essentially growing, you know, in water, indoors, um, in controlled environments where you can you know, enhance some of these sustainable sorts of, of, of approaches. Ooh. You know what? I'm even more disappointed that I missed last week because that sounds really interesting. Oh, um, I have some good news though, Dion. Guess what? Are they coming back? Well, no. Well, well yeah, oh. maybe someday, but <laughs> you can watch the replay on bloomtvnetwork.com. <laughs> so smart, Kara. Thank you for that reminder. Uh, all of our replays, all 28,000 videos that we've done can all yeah, be right? on the replay on bloomtvnetwork.com. And the beauty is if you, you everyone can watch it. You don't have yeah. to be a subscriber. Um, yeah. Once you fall in love with our Flowers and Friends talk show, then you will subscribe and um, you'll be able to watch hundreds of videos also and learn from people all over the world all about the different ways that flowers can heal. Absolutely. Right? Hey, real quick, I wanted to remind everyone um, that uh, so we were just talking about getting on Bloom TV Network and watching Flowers and Friends. Uh -huh. And then you'd want to get reimmersed in a lot of the videos on there. We have a free month. Uh, yeah, yes. here we go right there. So uh, don't forget, we have this special going on. I know it probably won't go on forever, but one free month. Just use the code FLOWERS and you can browse all the different videos that are on Bloom TV Network. Wonderful. We um, we got a Halloween winner. I know for certain. I watched our Halloween clips, all of the submissions one night, and I went, get out of here. <laughs> like, I was so they were creative. Yeah, they were was. so was creative. So Garden and Grace Florals won our one thousand um, dollar gift certificate. So congratulations to all the winners. But Garden and Grace, they took it to another level when they went underwater. No. literally, literally level. underwater with floral <laughs> Halloween. It was and they are Bloom TV experts. I mean, they. Do you know if they have more videos on the platform? Because if not, they're I know they're new. They're I, I yeah. actually communicated so they just with them recently. They're they're new, and she was working on a video uh, last night, actually. So yeah, <laughs> they need to be on the show. We we need to have her on Absolutely. the show. Absolutely, I think they have a pilot actually coming from at the end mm -hmm. of the month um, to Bloom TV. And you guys on Instagram, they are Garden and Grace Florals. Um, but Ashley Rodriguez, first place. We had Anna Vivas, second place. And Ivan won third place. You guys, great job. All of the other entries were fascinating. I, my, I'm a shout out to my girl, Angie. She did a pumpkin floral makeover. Um, oh, so really, really fun to see all of those videos. And yeah. it made me feel bad that I should have done one. And their, their, their pilot. <laughs> we did. We did here. We on did. The Remember, we I did, did a I pumpkin did show and it was we don't want to compete because we're hosting everyone. Oh. So that's why we didn't enter the competition. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Well, let's dive into who our beautiful guest is. This mama six and one on the way. Kara, tell everybody about what we have happening oh, today. Yeah. Yes, we're going to learn about dried flowers and creating a wreath with them. So let's bring Katie Walter on the screen. Hello. Hi, Katie. Hi. Katie. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome, welcome. Katie Walter is started Nourish Blooms. And uh, Nourish Blooms was started to fund the nonprofit, the Nourish Foundation, which provides fresh produce to food and secure families and medical care for underserved patients with lifestyle illnesses. I, for one, can't wait to hear more about that. And two, what you have to show us today. So welcome. Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. Um, so yeah, like Kara said, I started Nourish Blooms. Selfishly, I really wanted to grow some flowers, I think. So it kind of meshed with my heart's desire to be back in the soil and mm -hmm. um, growing flowers. And my grandma had a farm and a nursery. And so it's kind of always been something I've been passionate about. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I went to undergrad, went to medical school, kind of 
lost touch with some of that. And so um, once we started the foundation, which like Kara said, um, first it actually started with us doing fresh produce boxes for food insecure families in my clinic. Um, and so we deliver those on a weekly basis. So we have volunteer drivers that um, kind of choose a family and they build a relationship with that family mm-hmm. and they deliver their produce boxes to their house every Friday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we started with that, but I kind of always had a vision for integrating that into more uh, multidisciplinary, like holistic care for kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so more more than just here's some food that we think is good for you. We don't really know if it's helping. We don't know if your health outcomes are improving. But instead, to also have those patients um, kind of have meal plans with that produce. Um, and so we've we've kind of built in a clinic now called Nourish Wellness that's under the foundation. And so the produce boxes are part of their meal plan. Um, we also have kinesiology, so we help with physical activity. Mm-hmm. We have social work to help with, you know, a lot of those social determinants of health that um, you can ask someone to eat healthy and work out all you want, but if they don't have the resources to do those things, then they can't. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have that, and we've partnered with Auburn University so that they provide mm-hmm. interns for us. Oh, for wow. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's really so incredible. That's, yeah. So that started, um, that started in March. <laughs> Feels like yesterday, but it was yeah. March. Um, so yeah. And then what else have we been doing? So yeah, the, the cut flowers basically was therapeutic for me, but also that funding that we get from selling the flowers and, you know, from some of these dried wreaths that we're going to talk about today, um, go toward funding that program because we don't charge our patients. So it's okay. all donation funded. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I, I have a question that's I'm just sitting there thinking about you and your family with all of your children and one on the way. And I'm guessing I know the answer, but I would love to hear more about what it's like doing this with a family. Are your children involved and do they do they get as excited as you do about helping other families? Well, so they do. They get excited about more of like the nourish things, but there are definitely times where uh, you know, you, you see these pictures on Instagram, right? Where everyone's kids are like, "Woo, we're going to plant some flowers. And like, it's really <laughs> natural and not always like that. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Instagram's not always reality. It's the right. best yeah. moment yeah. you get yeah. once a month or something like but that. But the lesson, but the <laughs> yeah. lesson. And yeah. I mean, it's the education of what you're doing. Right. You're having, an, you're having a direct impact on your children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they... They like the overall concept. It's just sometimes the physical labor, as much as it's therapeutic for me, I think they maybe just need time to build that relationship. Um, And I will say, you know, for our teenagers, because my oldest is 15 now and then 13, um, we've basically made it into a job for them. We also homeschool, so they do like an agriculture elective too. So we've incentivized some of that. Wow. That's really wonderful. Well, show us what you're going to make for us today. What yeah. Are you going to see? Yeah. So we are going to do a dried flower wreath today. Um, there's also some elements that are not necessarily dried. Some of the evergreen components that I wanted to bring in since uh, it's 80 outside, but yeah. I think it's fall. <laughs> right. Same here, Sandy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like we got that one frost, killed all the flowers, and now yeah. it's like consistently, you know, high 70s, 80 degrees. Right. But um, but we do have some flowers that I've dried and then some evergreen components that um, tend to last a while. So they're okay to also use. Um, we You can make a full floral wreath, but I think we'll probably go with a partial today, just given time constraints. Also, um, we have a lot of customers that prefer the partial look. So if it's a little bit more minimalistic and um can have more of that like mid-century modern vibe to it so first um and i don't know if y'all are like me but when i'm trying to learn how to do something it's sometimes like the very intricate things that i miss and so for instance like how do i put my wire on a floral ring right um so it sounds simple but sometimes it slips really easily right so i tend to keep wherever i'm working kind of directly in front of me. So that includes like how do I put the wire on? So it might not be very easy to see, but 
I twist it around a few times and then twist the two pieces of wire around themselves. And don't ever cut your wire until the wreath is done. So um, when I first started making wreaths, I would put one bundle on and then I would cut the wire. And then I'd do another bundle and then I'd cut the wire. And that is way more work than it needs to be. So <laughs> keep your wire. So you kind of have your little bundle of wire. And then I, so I like my wreaths to not be, I mean, I do have like this wreath right here is a little bit more compact, but I like to have kind of some of the whimsical, like mm -hmm. wild pieces kind of hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I will do some like bigger long pieces. So like I have vines and um, these little guys, which I wish I knew what they were, um, but grasses, like wild grasses, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Katie, so can I, I, I want to yeah. ask you a question, Katie, yeah. because I honestly, I'm just going to call myself out here. <laughs> See, they seem very basic to a lot of you, but for me, it's not, it's this, I don't know. When you are talking about that ring, that wreath. Yeah. Like what is that ring made? Yeah, of? no, that's a great it? question. Um, so I actually went to Michael's and bought these. Um, mm -hmm. They are kind of advertised as wreath rings. Um, I really like the muted gold ones. They have silver. They also have like, sometimes I'll use the grapevine ones. Um, these, oh, yeah, I've seen them, that. These, yeah okay. you wrap them the same exact way. They're just a little bit, um, they're just bigger. So maybe a little bit harder to handle, but I love doing the grapevine too. And then if you're really creative, you can make your own bases. So I have not done that yet, but Okay. That is on my list of using like some grapevine and drying that and making a base yourself. Awesome. Thank you for yeah. explaining that a little further. Yeah, absolutely. So I, if I'm using kind of the longer pieces, I tend to put those on first. Um, so I might just throw the wire, just a couple loops around that. I don't know if you can see, it's easier to leave it flat, but it's harder for y'all to see. So um, just to demonstrate. And so if you have it flat, you have that part that you're working on right directly in front of you, then you can kind of grab different elements that you want to bunch together. So some people will bunch these ahead of time, right? And so you just have a bunch of little bunches and you can kind of knock the wreath out pretty quick. I personally like to do it in the moment because I just don't know exactly what I want to do until I'm doing it. Right. <laughs> So I will take kind of a bundle. So you have like an evergreen component, a floral component, sometime, you know, one of these little fun, whimsical grasses. And then I layer those on top of each other and I just put it right on top of where we started the longer piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Great. then again, I didn't cut my wire. I'm just going to wrap it around a few times and you want to pull really tight. So like tighter than you probably think you need to because otherwise you go to pick up your wreath and they all just kind of slide around and then you have to redo it and i've done that before that's not fun <laughs> so are these flowers the ones you're using today yeah. they're not dried right katie they are so these flowers are dried the only okay. thing that's not is a couple of my evergreen components so like i cut tea olive um because it tends to last a really long time without water. And even mm -hmm. as it dries on the wreath still looks pretty. And then my ivy is not dried, but everything else in here has been dried. And so kind of like behind me, I just hang them up upside down, leave them there for, I mean, you're probably not supposed to leave them there for quite as long as I do, but <laughs> around a week or so, <laughs> then you can store them in a container. And just as long as they don't get moldy, and you've done it in kind of a dry environment. And if you harvest at the right time, they'll hold their color. So you want to harvest as though you're using the flowers in a live okay. arrangement. And then okay. dry them like that. What is that orange flower? This is a marigold. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so I have marigold. Right. Marina, and then just some um, wild grass. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sure you all know this, but it took me a while to learn this. I dry goldenrod now because our solidago, I think, is its, you know, scientific name. Um, I used to think it was the cause of allergies. It's not. And so uh -huh. I use it a lot in my arrangements. And then I also dry that a lot because it's kind of a thicker base. So it helps hide the wire or grapevine um, ring, too. And so, but sometimes you have to educate 
some of your customers because they'll think that they're going to have like an allergic reaction to it. They think it's ragweed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's definitely still like a like a myth or whatever you want to call it that that goldenrod is the culprit and it's not. So now I'm just making a second bundle. So I want again to grab elements from the greenery and I actually have some boxwood I'm gonna throw in there too. Yeah, like you're selecting intentionally contrasting textures and colors yes. to really absolutely. make the best. Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, um, and I honestly like, I love themed colored wreaths too. But I will say most of mine tend to just be whatever I have and they turn out to be fine. Now, unless someone requests like, I want only orange flowers or yellow or purple or <laughs> something like that. But I tend to just use what we have and most people are happy with it. So even dahlias. So I made a classic mistake of not corralling my dahlias. And so we had a big storm come through and they all fell over. <laughs> and started to Grow toward the sun, so their yeah. stems were all crazy, and so I was like, "Well, these are great candidates for dried flowers." <laughs> no one cares what their stems look like, so we did have a bunch of dahlias that um, that I was able to use dried. So the next part, this is kind of this this is where like things can get a little tricky, as you want to kind of layer your bundles. So like this one is more toward me. This one is going to be more toward the center. And so you want to make sure that as you're looking, you can't see the wire or the base of the wreath, whatever you're using through those bundles. So again, I'm just going to wrap really tightly around the stems. So every time you do a new wrap, Katie, you are hiding the previous uh, wire. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. With the bundle. Yes. And so I'm slowly going to go from this direction this way. And eventually, if we did a full wreath, eventually I would get all the way to this side. And then I could kind of show you how to hide that wire. So you still make a hook so that you can hang it. Uh -huh. but you're, you're not seeing where you started the wreath, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So do you, are you going to clip off the pieces that are kind of pointed off towards you? Or are you? Gonna yes. Yeah. I do that at the last step because I have learned that a lot of times you hide those anyways. And so uh -huh. I don't want to do extra work. <laughs> so yeah. if I end up hiding them, then I'm not going to cut them off. But if they're not hidden, then I will absolutely go around and trim them down. Mm -hmm. So and, well, while you're building that, while, well, while you're building that, I yeah. um, I noticed on your Instagram, and we talked a little bit about this when you first came on, it says, flowers feed families. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a very to the point statement. And I know that has to do with your nourished blooms and um, everything that you're doing. But for those that missed the beginning, can you kind of touch on your, your nonprofit and really, more importantly, how people listening today to join your efforts? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we, the funds from the flowers, there's a lot of Fs, <laughs> the funds from the flowers feed families. Um, and that mostly stems from um, initially our, our nonprofit starting as just providing those produce boxes. And so that was a literal meaning there. Um, at this point, also with having the medical component, um, feeding or nourishing in general, I think can also go, can kind of be expanded in our mind to um, feeding them emotionally and psychologically and from a medical standpoint, and then literally with the produce too. Um, and we do, I don't know if I mentioned, but we have a mindfulness component to the program as well. And some people, you know, get a little like, what is mindfulness? What does that mean? Um, we provide a journal that is basically about emotional regulation to all of our patients and their caregivers. And um, so we also want there to be an emotional and behavioral component as well. So with all of that being said, um, we are 100 percent donor slash grant driven. Um, and so you don't have to live close to help us. Um, I would say funding is probably our biggest need right now. So if y'all felt led to give to that, you can go to our website, which is nourishfoundation.co, not .com, just .co. Um, and there's 
plenty of places on there that have donation buttons. You can actually sponsor our family. Um, so if you go to the Nourish Wellness section, you can sponsor one of our families and it breaks down kind of the cost of how much for a year or six months or a month, whatever you can do. Um, and we actually have a gift giving guide that allows you to sponsor the produce component as well. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So there's a lot of people, right, that you're like, I don't really know what to get them because I kind of yeah. have everything. So um, right. we can email our certificate as well. That kind of says, you know, that that gift was given in honor of whoever you're gifting it to. I love that. And Anna, I'm just kind of, this. all of this is kind of reminding me, Anna, about your passion about feeding families and flowers for food. You know, it's making me think about really what you have been focusing on in the last year of your business, right, Anna? Uh, yes. <laughs> Devin, oh, you're so nice. <laughs> well, I'm just like, I, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I can just imagine Anna is like, yes, this is this is something you're truly passionate about as well. Definitely. Yes, helping yeah. others brings so much. I think that's what, what we're here for. We need to share. We need to be there for others. That's what community is all about, getting everyone involved and enjoying the ride with you guys, with others less fortunate, bringing your community to help out. I love what you're doing, Katie. It's, it's been so inspiring listening to you. And I love it when there's a reason, a more profound reason behind what we do. Don't you think so? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's funny too, because it like, I think it, um, it's just interesting how our gifts are always used in different ways because I was pretty horrible at fundraising. <laughs> so oh. I learned that pretty quickly. <laughs> and so I realized I needed to have some sort of sustainable funding for the program. And my heart is so much in flowers and in growing um, and just in being outside and outdoors and in nature that it was like, okay, I can actually offer a product that I feel like is, um, you know, it's it can stand on its own in the sense that I could just sell the flowers, right? But so I want to have like an excellent product for people that is, you know, regenerative and grown in a sustainable way, but also that can serve to fill that gap that I'm not very good at, which is fundraising. <laughs> so it's been a nice way to reframe some of my deficits <laughs> i love it so katie how do how do you sell your flowers like do you have bouquet subscriptions like how do people get their hands on your yeah. flowers yeah so we do offer subscriptions which will deliver or they can pick up um we have a couple like coffee shops in the area that we partner with that will drop the subscriptions off at i will say most people want them delivered um but we offer that on our website which is nourishblooms.com um, and then we also, we do like what they call city market here through the city of Auburn. Um, and that runs from May until typically the end of August. And so we sell market bouquets there. Um, we also do these dried wreaths. We do kind of what Kara did, the dried pumpkin arrangements. Um, we also will do live pumpkin arrangements too. So with live flowers, um, I'm trying to think what else we, yeah. Mostly it's through the website. We don't really have like a brick and mortar right. shop. I don't even have like a flower stand at our farm yet because right. our farm is not aesthetically pleasing at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it takes time. It's, I understand. <laughs> it's functional. Yes. <laughs> it flowers, but, um, so that's uh, honestly another place where my heart is, is in build, building experiences for people and like, creating space for a relationship to happen. And so my vision for the farm would be to have a space where we have, you know, workshops and events. And I love to teach too. Um, and so I would love to also have a little bit more of that be my focus as well. So we just need, we're, we're kind of working through creating that space too. That's incredible because I think right now life is mostly about living experiences mm -hmm. and flowers are great at creating all sorts of experiences. So yeah. I'm sure you're going to get 
<laughs> your space and it's gonna be wonderful yeah we um we are we're definitely in that like vision stage which <laughs> i I tend to operate great there. It's just the like implementation, right? So that's where we need to move into next. So that's my hope is I really just want flowers to be kind of like a gateway to relationship, you know, also they're beautiful in and of themselves, but um, they can be so much more, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, because if you can give that experience to your community, I mean, when you receive flowers, it's incredible. But yes. when you actually get to create with them, to touch them, to feel yes. them, and take that arrangement home or that creation, yes. you know, you take it to a whole different level. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I have another question for you, yeah. Katie. That yeah. might, I don't, I don't know, I feel so silly. Um, so if you've got this wreath, my friend, yeah. and you're hanging it on your door or in your home or like in your yeah. window, the way that you have yours there, do you does it ever expire or like does it ever go bad or you just get tired of it or yeah how, how long would you leave a wreath up like this I yeah guess. that is not a dumb question because i okay, get that from you know, oh, that's the right <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is people's number one question because, you know, they're investing finances into that. So they don't want it to do something they have to throw away in a week, right? So um, we actually have a coffee shop in town that um, bought some of these wreaths just for decoration. And they that was last October and they still have them up. I will say they are more muted. Um, and some, you know, there's the, the color is not quite as vibrant but they've had them inside, so out of the elements and just kind of hanging up for a year and they're still there. And I think still look beautiful, but I do really like dried flowers. So maybe I'm a little bit biased. Um, but if you were to put this like on your door, outside your door, right? Yeah. Like your front yeah. door, um, depending on if it ever got wet or if it was really windy or things like that, then that's gonna decrease the lifespan, but definitely a few months like at the minimum. Okay. That's really good. And it's because I'm an artist, I'm yeah. already thinking like I could tip the flowers. I could make them more vibrant. I could paint yeah. this and I could paint <laughs> that. And yeah. like, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, if I don't want it to be more harmful, but I figure if it's already dried, maybe painting some of the petals would work. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, the thing, what you do is magical. So I'm sure you could make it look Thank amazing. You. Um, Thank you. <laughs> If all you had was just to put your wreath somewhere, it's going to last you a while. So, yeah. That's excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for not making me feel silly either. No, like, no. Oh, not at all. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to do, you're going to do this as a partial. So when you were explaining partial, what you yeah. meant was you're not going to necessarily wrap all of it because the new kind of more modern style is to actually mm -hmm. expose part of the the wreath right yeah yes okay. absolutely so yeah as you can see we've done a few more bundles so i've kind of just alternated whether i lie them kind of more toward me or away from me so that you can't see you really i mean you can see the wire right here because i'm not i haven't finished this edge but the rest of it you can't see and you can't see the hoop at all um so you just really are kind of laying these bundles and then basically there's no right or wrong. Like, when do I stop? How many bundles should I put? If you wanted to go maybe to about here and then wrap with a ribbon and I have some burlap ribbon that I can show you, um, then you're done. And so then you can kind of go along and clip your edges, but also if you get halfway and you decide you want a full wreath, you can just keep going. Um, but it is, it's interesting that most of my customers have preferred the partials when we're out at market or when they're, we put them into different coffee shops and stores. I and love that. Go ahead. What, what are you going to do with the long part that you started with? Yeah. Yeah. So that, um, either, and I'll show you, sorry, I like started wrapping well you were asking, but that we can either trim up or okay, hold on, make sure I got this really tight or we can take it and I'll kind of face toward you. And oh, some of the parts. I like it. It's oh, yeah, I like it. Yeah. And this will start to kind of 
give a little bit more of a curvature. So it's just a little bit more artistic maybe. And uh -huh. sometimes when, when I come to this end, I might then put another piece over here. And so- Ooh, I love it's that. It's so that. different and creative. I think that's why they're selling more because it's not the traditional one. Yeah. Around, so this is more modern. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. And I think they like right now that muted gold is really popular too. So if you can see some of that, I think that ha helps add a little decorative component to it. Too. I like that too. So how do you know when you're finished? Like, how do you know when it's, when it's done? And then are there any special things you have to do to finish it off? Yeah, that's a great question. Okay. So if you like, let's say we decided that we wanted to finish it here, right? Uh -huh. Which is small, but maybe that's what you want. So you would then cut your wire, give yourself a big enough amount that you can um, twist it around where you were. So I just cut that with my pruners. I mean, technically you can use a wire cutter, but it's 24 gauge wire, so it's very okay. small. So you can pretty much cut that with your pruners. And then I don't know how well you can see this, but I usually take this loose end and I just tuck it around some of the other wire, uh -huh. pull it through, and I do that like three or four times. So then it's just not going to come undone, right? Okay. Watch me, but we could just pretend uh -huh. like I did that three or four times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that chat is going crazy. Every everybody loved that you showed us how it looked and the comments. Okay. So crazy. <laughs> I love it. So unique. Good. Okay. So then I cut those little ends that we talked about before and you do not have to use burlap. You can use twine. Sometimes I'll wrap twine and just put like a really simple knot on it because the burlap can be a little more, I mean, in Alabama, people like burlap, right? But that doesn't always yeah. play out. So um, you can just wrap it and tie either just a knot or you can tie a bow and then when you hang it, you have covered the metal, if that makes sense. Um, and then sure. you want to put another, some sort of hook up here, which I actually will use the ribbon for that too, because then it's a pretty hook. Now, mm -hmm. if you have a full wreath, I just use the metal because you can't tell that I've tied metal onto it because I covered it with flowers. Um, okay. But yeah, if you have a partial, sometimes with that, I will... Um, I did have scissors in here, but now, of course, I can't find them. Um, if you have a partial, sometimes I will just wrap it with burlap. That's oh, not working great, but okay. So let's pretend like I had cut that piece off <laughs> and see if maybe that is helpful in demonstrating. So you could kind of have like either a bow or you could just have it tied off on the end and then a hook up here so that you, the customer knows where to hang it. Or Katie, it. Katie I pre I'm feeling pretty confident I could do this. I think okay. I do this. That's good. That's what I want. Yeah. I you think can I totally could, do it. Ladies. Yeah, I, I do. I think that's really beautiful. The organic look. I love um, anything, you know, the, the natural. I paint in a way that has, you know, more of an abstract look. So in my mind, I look at this and I go, it's an abstract wreath. That's kind of the way I relate to it myself. Yeah. And yeah, one absolutely. of the things I like the most about making wreaths it's that it's so repetitive that it's actually very relaxing. I mean, yes. you start yeah. and it's, there's not much thought, but just your connection with picking the yeah. flowers, but it's relaxing. And I love the idea of not making it full because yeah. it gives it a twist. I love yeah. it. I loved it. Well, yeah. I have a question for all of you, because all of you guys work with flowers and you've all, I, Kara, you've mentioned dried flowers and of course Katie's are, are here for, for this. And I'm just curious, have any of you ever preserved a wedding bouquet for people? Have you done that, Katie? Yes, I have. Yeah. I mean, Kara is probably well beyond my skill level in that but uh, but yeah yeah i mean honestly and carrie you correct me or tell me if you have some other magic to it which i'm sure you do but as long as the flowers are still pretty um in their prime i guess is a, a good way to say it you can hang dry them just like this 
and um, you can preserve them like in a shadow box or just whatever whatever look they're going for. Some I have had one um, couple request to actually put them on a partial wreath, and all they wanted was their bouquet on there. Oh, so that's beautiful. Uh, Yes. So I haven't actually preserved a wedding bouquet, but like I, I see a lot of people do this online and I see them a lot of the times putting the flowers in silica um, yes. powder. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, yeah. and so, and actually last week on the flowers and friends talk show, Sarah was talking about yeah. how she preserved dahlias that way. Yep. And the color was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it was great. Is, um, hanging them dry. I'm looking up because I have dried flowers up there in my yeah. ceiling. <laughs> um, uh, the color isn't preserved quite as well as yeah. you would have with the silica. So yes. good. And option. that's a that's a, a powder you put on your yeah. flowers. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like the, it kind of looks like big chunks of salt. Yeah. And you yeah you put it in a little little box and there's a certain period of time that you have to put the flowers in there and then yeah. they come out looking pretty close to yeah, what well. they look like when they were on the plant so and then yeah. people take uh, they take the flowers and then you take resin uh-huh uh you take resin and they somehow i don't do this but they somehow create this fun little design and then they put resin over it and it's preserved forever <laughs> yeah yeah we actually offer, it's interesting that you mentioned that, Kara, we offer resin preserved floral jewelry too. And I'm sure you can't see them, but I have them on my earrings right now, which I'm not close enough for you to see. Uh -huh. but, um, but yeah, you just dry the flowers just like you would otherwise. And then um, you have to mix the resin just right. That's actually the hardest part, not the flowers, because you have to get like the perfect mix and let it dry so that it's not rubbery and kind of bendable. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, they keep their color forever. So wow. that's really cool. It's reminding me that I actually have some resin earrings that were given to me recently, um, little pink flowers and they were pressed in resin and I was never thought about all the uses of resin, but as an artist, I love the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, Katie, this has been so helpful and educational and I am just excited to learn more from you. I'm following you on Instagram as well at Nourish Bloom. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank y'all so much for having me and for giving me the chance to come on and teach. It was it was really fun. I loved it. Yes, yeah. Katie, I could talk to you for a long time because I am starting a, <laughs> a thing at my church where I'm starting a garden to try to help feed yeah. others that need help. And yeah. I do have one question. Do you guys grow a lot of your vegetables or are you buying in produce? Yeah, so our co-founder is a local farmer. And so initially, most of our produce was actually sourced from her. We've moved a little bit more toward another local farmer's market for a lot of the supplies, just because uh -huh. we've grown our program a decent amount. So we've outgrown her capacity. Um, and some of the fruit, if I'm being honest, is not grown super locally because like bananas and grapes. Yeah, and like right. That. Yeah, but all of our, most of our vegetables are grown locally. So, um, but we are, we're looking to expand our veggie production. That is not my area of expertise though. So. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Well, I love that because you're working with other farmers in the area. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, and that was part of our like sustainability model too. And to try and have our food, you know, grown in an or organic way too. So, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and Kara, I... I've watched you all this whole show. I want to know, you've got so much going on around you. What have you been up to, you busy little bee? I have so many dried flowers around me too. You know, um, you know, one of my very first gigs that I got paid for as a cut flower grower was actually drying flowers for a wedding. Okay. Oh, as a cut flower grower, I'm like, ah, can I do this? And I was just making flower confetti. So uh, people could throw it at the end of a That's wedding. Beautiful. I love that. I love that idea. Yeah. Oh, but I had to make enough flower confetti for 200 people to throw. Oh, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Ever, yeah. I don't know if you, so this is my first year as a cup flower grower. And I'm like, hey. Can I grow enough flowers? Like, I don't know if you've ever had to make flower confetti or if you've dried flowers, but they no. shrivel up to not much. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. so, I did a lot of research.
research, I figured out the recipe of how many dried flowers I would need for 200 people. And um, I'll just, it was over three gallons of dried flower petals. Wow. And uh, that wow. was my experience of drying flowers. And um, wow. since then, I have just kind of, how many flowers is that? I don't know how many flowers it was, but it, it equates <laughs> to about a fourth a cup of dried flowers per person. Yeah, and it was 48 million. Yeah, right? It, right. it felt like 48 <laughs> million. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, 48 million. And so it was really cute. I had them in these cute, like, sort of like, not ice cream cones, but they were like these little cones and the flowers came out. It was fun. Um, so anyways, I have just gotten into dry flowers after that. And as I started growing cut flowers, I figured out some of the flowers I grow dry really well. Like, for example, um, this wreath right here that I made. Um, this, is, this is a year old, actually. Um, I didn't just make this wreath. So this pink right here is larkspur. Um, and that's actually a seed I'm sowing right now to germinate, to bloom next uh, late May. And uh, so that's one of the wreaths that I made. And then another one over here. This is a purple wreath that I made and it's got um, lots yeah, I know of you love that. You yeah. your purple, I know you love uh, that. That's, can you show us the back of that wreath? How, or, how, what did you attach? Oh. The back is uh, just wire. It's a wire base right here. Uh -huh. Uh huh. And I, I use the same wire like Katie was talking about. And let me tell you, if you want to make a full dried flower wreath like this, there's a uh -huh. reason why they're so expensive. Uh -huh. It takes so many flowers yes. to make a dried flower wreath right there. Mm -hmm. And then one of my favorite, let me get my, I have it hanging up here. One of my favorite wreaths that I've done is this one right here. And I have lots uh -huh. of. Little I like the texture in that. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. love it. So we'll, we'll, we'll hang that back up in a minute. I, so, I can also get that one. I see it perfectly hanging in my kitchen. I know, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> so dry flowers are just, I, I figured out that they are fun when you are growing the right type of flowers that dry well, because not every flower looks fabulous dried. Um, and they can just be fun to create with. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. I have I have been working and painting flowers this week, you all. I haven't dried any, haven't made any wreaths, but I've been painting a ton of flowers. So my my newest journal, I'm doing more like almost a tropical feel. I, I have this resistance to cold weather. I just do. I don't like it. So um for my for my newest journals, I've been doing more of it tropical and then i also jumped off of our lily show where we focus on lilies and um i have my newest journal so i, I paint on the front and the back of them oh gorgeous i just, I just wow. feel like everywhere in our home should have a surface of flowers right and so absolutely if they, if they can't get fresh ones outside at least we can bring them inside to our table so my journals offer pages and pages of maybe pressed flowers that would work right between the pages uh-huh um, watercolor is kind of what i intended them to do so i have different sizes but i gave my group a challenge a 10-day watercolor challenge and ladies i want to give you guys this challenge as well not for watercolor not gonna have to do that <gasps> wow. oh wow oh so, wow i, I knew but it kind of looks like i I got a good, I have a good feel for what I'm doing, but I'm new to this. Um, <laughs> I'm new what? To this. Oh my goodness. Oh, I am so new to that. We had our tutorial a few months ago where we yeah. sat together and you, you guys, we painted together and we let Christy guide us through and it really sparked something just by being on the show. And I've since really worked hard to get these journals ready. I've been watercoloring and I think with the 10 day challenge, Instead of us focusing on what does our watercolor look like, I wanted the ladies to really focus on the fact and doing something new and getting that spark because it just took me being on this one show and having Christy kind of guide us through. And we lost ourselves that show, didn't we? Like, we were like, oh, we're recording? Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it just really, we, we took a few minutes to really just in the paint, and I want to keep doing that. So I ended up making um, my own watercolors that mine that I don't have. Oh, I never know how.
how one of our guests is going to leave an impression or one of yeah. the videos that I've watched on Bloom are really going to spark some creativity and really get us um, inspired. So my challenge to you all ladies, before we come back next week, oh. <laughs> is to think of something that maybe you could do for, for, for 10 days in a row that you've wanted to get better at. And maybe it's just wrapping flowers around a wire wreath, or maybe it's um, making some sort of tablescape or planning some sort of Thanksgiving tables decor. I don't know what it could be, but um, I think doing something for 10 days, compare day one to day 10, we've learned something. It may be different for everybody, but we've learned something. So I'm really excited to see what the ladies um, that said, I'll do it. And I, I, I love the accountability. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, ladies. I see all of you commenting and and I, uh, anyway, we launched these today. So it felt appropriate to say, I've been painting flowers, although I'm not making beautiful wreaths like Katie or Kara. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Let it's inspiring. Me Thank you. Thank you, Dion. I'll have to think of a crafty thing to do for 10 days. Because <laughs> I've been doing my ice bath constantly. It's been eight days now. And I set up a challenge to do it for two weeks every day. And I think I'm going to keep doing it because... That's a good enough challenge. I, I think, I think that's really good. That's a good ten day challenge, two week challenge. Um, I still don't know how you're doing it. I'm super. I'm like, honest. Is like, fierce. is the challenge to get it colder each day? Like, it you cannot get colder. It's, can you not? Okay. No, it cannot get colder. Okay. It's already freezing temperature. It cannot get any colder. Up, tell us your process of how you set up this ice bath. <laughs> I would like to know what's your process like. How do you set it up? <laughs> well, we have this the big water. tank. No, we have this big tank, and we sometimes we get the full ice, the big ice thing. I don't know, like from like the gas station. Frozen. You know how in the movie Frozen, this guy sold the ice in uh -huh. big cubes. Uh -huh. <laughs> now I know what they're for. So sometimes we get that and we scratch <laughs> it and it's therapy to get all the anger out. <laughs> Wait, where do you buy an ice cube like this? Well, I get that in Mexico, in Tijuana, because oh. we have ice places where really? people from restaurants and stuff like that get their ice. Okay. But if we have shorter amounts of time, we, we buy bags of yeah. ice. Okay. And, uh -huh, and the water gets to freezing temperature in just five minutes. The other way, it takes 30 minutes. And the and purpose then, of this, I mean, Katie, I breathe in and out. I breathe in and out. It's okay. <laughs> there are so many physiological benefits, like um, it's a reset to your immune system. Okay. All your blood starts flowing through your body, so everything works better. Um, inflammation targets it. Uh huh. It's like it, targeting and more healing for any uh -huh. inflammation that might inflammation, be. Inflammation, okay. your organs work better, and the production of endorphins, you know, mm -hmm. all those happy hormones, yeah, increases by 500% with just oh. two minutes of being in the ice water but then this is the reason why i'm doing it mostly okay okay there's a breathing technique okay wow. so there's a breathing that you have to do and that breathing because your body goes into full shock immediately i mean there's yeah. no you don't get used to the cold it's not like oh today it's less cold so you go into the cold and you do this breathing technique and you like Stop focusing on the cold uh -huh. and get through it. So yeah. the purpose is to feel comfortable with the uncomfortable. Okay. Because gotcha. that way you can make possible the impossible. Oh, she oh. just dropped a mic. She just dropped a mic. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing it. And that. in real life, it's like when something challenging walks in, when something out of nowhere I just start breathing and immediately I like 
center myself, and then I can make smart decisions instead of like reacting in automatic pilot. Hmm. Okay. That's awesome. I'm so okay. glad you're exploring that. And I really do. I'm teasing you um, yeah. when I say I think you might be crazy, but I don't mean that. I know there's a reason, a scientific beneficial reason. And I am really, that's fascinating. Um, for those of you that don't want to do the ice bath, you can make wreaths like Katie and um, I definitely, <laughs> yes, no, there, there are so many ways to connect and challenge yourself and thinking, I mean, constant, doing something constant, it's, it's great. And medicine. the art of practice, the art of practice is kind of what I was mentioning. And Katie, when are you going to be um, having your next baby? So I'm due November 27th. Um, oh, so okay. yeah, in about four weeks. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, well, yep. we just want to thank you for being on here with us. This was such a mm -hmm. treat. We love what you're doing. We're also, um, of course, lovers of flowers and how they can heal. And it makes a perfect it, it makes a perfect collaboration for you to be on Bloom TV. So thank you mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, thank y'all so much. I had I had a lot of fun. Please send us a picture when you finish your wreath. We want to see it hanging. Okay, I definitely will. Thank yes. you. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> When we get the photo, I would love to post it on our Flowers and Friends Instagram page that we have. Uh, make sure you guys are following us there. It's Flowers and Friends underscore talk show. And uh, we post all about upcoming guests there and we show clips of past episodes. So we will definitely show her photo there. And remember to tag us if you ever, well, please do a wreath. You're going to love the experience and tag us in your pictures because yes. we love showing our viewers what you guys are doing and, and how you get inspired by our guests. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody that tunes in every single week, we just want to thank you. We hope that you're inspired by flowers. Um, you can always catch the replay by just going to bloomtvnetwork.com and you can go to Flowers and Friends and you can watch all of our shows on replay. You can watch them on your mobile device, on your laptop, wherever you are and wherever you like to stream. Um, let's thank our beautiful sponsors who help us put this show on and support Bloom. We have built the world's first flower-focused streaming network, bringing the public educational and entertaining shows that highlight the magic of flowers. Learn how to heal through flowers, cook with flowers, design your living space to reflect nature, make crafts using florals, sustainably garden, and so much more. We are your network for all things floral. Join us at Bloom TV as we help bring beauty to the lives of people and the planet through nature's most beautiful creation, the flower. Oh. I feel like, you know what? I, I always get this feeling at the end of the show, and I feel more grounded and centered than I did before because it's Friday and it's been, you know, week is crazy. Um, but I do really love coming to this place in the afternoon where um, I just feel like we're back on the same page. Right. Our goals are the same. We're united through flowers. And it's, it's a really great space that I am so grateful for, ladies. So thank you for your time with me today. Yes, thank you. I feel loving this inspiration. I think I'm going to make a read this weekend. I, yes. I, I, I feel like doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you better. You better. And, and on the Instagram page. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Kara, tell everybody why they should watch shows with us every single Friday. Because everything is better with flowers and friends. Thank it you, guys. Is.